all of Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is Eyewitness News at 6. Good evening, everyone. Glad you could join us on this Thursday. I'm Nick Talma. I'm Candace Kelly. Day four of the Sean Christie federal trial brought with it some tense moments as prosecutors continue to build their case seeking a conviction for the Schuylkill County man. Christie was the focus of that three month manhunt that spans six states and Canada. Our lead I team reporter Andy Mahalschik live in Scranton tonight with the latest on the trial. Andy. Well, good evening, Nick and Candace. Federal prosecutors continue to call witness after witness, building their case step by step against Sean Christie. They say they will prove without a shadow of a doubt, as the U.S. Deputy Attorney said on Monday in his opening statements, that Sean Christie was a one man crime wave. Federal prosecutors called an FBI fingerprint expert who testified that Sean Christie's fingerprint was found inside a school van that was stolen from a bus company near Hazleton and found abandoned near Nitro, West Virginia. She told the jury there is no question it came from Sean Christie. We not only entered it into a national database, but we checked it visually with records available to us. But Christie fired back, did you hear my name before your analysis was completed? The agent said yes, because time was key. It's known as 24-7. The marshals wanted to know for sure who they are looking for in that area. Now, prosecutors say they suspected that Christie may have been in that area in the first place. Another witness, the owner of a trucking company in Maryland, testified that he saw a suspicious person on his property. That man ran away into a wooded area. He later learned it was Sean Christie. He found a backpack inside one of his trucks. The backpack contained a handgun, tools and maps, and a book on how to survive outdoors. Also found in that backpack, banking documents that were stolen from a truck in Kentucky. Those documents belonged to Dakota Meyer, who was once married to Bristol Palin, the daughter of one-time vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin. Now, back in 2011, Christie pled guilty to a one federal harassment charge in connection with alleged phone calls he made to an attorney in Alaska. That attorney represented the Palin family. Testimony resumes tomorrow morning at 9.30 here at Federal Court in Scranton. Reporting in downtown Scranton, Andy Mahal, Chicago Witness News. Andy, thanks for the update. And if convicted, Christie faces anywhere from 20 to 60 years in prison. Finally got some good sunshine today, and boy, it was spectacular. Great day out there. Chief Meteorologist Josh Rodell on the rooftop with more. Hi, Josh. Hello, Nick. Now we have that sun gone. It's behind us. We're tracking some rain showers tonight. So let me go ahead and show you this radar, and we'll watch it get closer and closer. But as it does so, it's kind of falling apart, so we're not expecting a lot of rain this evening, tonight or tomorrow morning. That said, you may see a couple of showers at your home and it's not going to be as cold tonight. Lows running between 40 and 45. Track the rain with us. We have interactive radar and it's on our eyewitness weather app. It's actually pretty neat, so check it out. We are tracking some wintry weather for the weekend. Nick, that forecast when I see you downstairs. Thank you, Josh. Nearly half a dozen medical marijuana dispensaries have opened in Scranton. The latest one held a ribbon cutting today. Eyewitness News reporter Cody Butler has more about how they plan to help patients. Flying high in the sky, marijuana is medicine. The new green goods in Scranton has opened. You got to go a little bit further to get people excited and, and get your name out there. So we thought it'd be a great way. The ribbon cutting ceremony marks the fifth medical marijuana dispensary to open in the electric city. Vario Health is the company who grows and distributes the drug through flour, vape, gummies and more. Medical professionals say it can help alleviate 23 conditions that currently qualify patients to use in Pennsylvania. They range from, you know, very dire to, you know, life ending ailments, uh, cancer, multiple sclerosis, AIDS, glaucoma. Thursday, medical physicians were on hand to answer questions from residents, patients, or future patients to help them understand the drug and how to get certified to receive medical marijuana. It takes away the stigma, makes cannabis out there and not like a dirty word that makes you go tee hee when you hear marijuana, cannabis, or anything like that. Those who live near the joint have mixed feelings. Some of those who are against it do not want to go on camera while others are okay with it. I just don't mind if it's uh, um, uh, for medical purpose. Sabir Aniket says with the amount of security 
As a resident, he is not worried. He says it's nice that there are not a lot of signs. I didn't even pay attention. I didn't even know this something is going on over here on this regard. I mean, on. Miller says around 10 to 15 patients come to the dispensary a day. With more people getting certified to use the drug, he's expecting that number to triple by the end of the year. You're seeing people who have conditions that are really benefiting from marijuana as a medicine. In Scranton, Cody Butler, Eyewitness News. All of the medical marijuana sold in the state is grown right here in Pennsylvania, and the Commonwealth legalized medical marijuana in 2016. A public hearing is underway in Luzerne County in the possible closure of SCI retreat. The Department of Corrections is holding the hearing at the Nanticoke Municipal Building. Officials, legislators and the public are given the opportunity to speak. The hearing is required under Act 133, the Municipal Code and Ordinance Compliance Act. Plans to close the state prison have been controversial. The closure could cost hundreds of jobs. Officials say closing the prison is a cost issue, and the more than 400 people who work there have been offered positions at other state prisons in the region. The hearing goes until 7 o'clock tonight. A New Jersey man has pleaded guilty now in connection with an overdose death in Monroe County. 30-year-old Jordan Levine was facing drug delivery resulting in death charges. According to court papers, Robert Rene Evenu died in February 2017 due to a heroin fentanyl overdose. Levine was accused of selling Evenu those drugs and warned them that the batch was strong. He will be sentenced at a later date. Well, it's a tradition that spans nearly five decades and it is done for another year. Today marked the final day of the Wilkes-Barre Farmers Market, which closes for the season on the Thursday before Thanksgiving. Besides fresh produce, Eyewitness News reporter Mark Hiller found plenty of thankfulness on Public Square. Angela Hosey hoped to buy some apples for sale on the final day at the Wilkes-Barre Farmers Market. Good news, there were apples for days. I'm always thankful for the farmer's market. She walked away with a bag full. This is a great way to get out in the middle of the day, have a quick break, get some great food, and I, I so appreciate the farmers. She's not alone. These are the collard greens that we make every week. Melissa Rivers owns the soul food restaurant MR Lounge in Plymouth. Um, let's go with a nice green, green, green one. She stocked up one last time on fresh from the oh, wait, farm cabbage, good. collard greens, and sweet potatoes. She's especially thankful this Thanksgiving. My business is successful um, thanks to things like this that I'm able to get affordable food and quality food and organic food. When you're talking thanks on this day, on this square, at this open air market, it's really a two way street. 80 year old Albert Broyan has sold fruits and vegetables at this farmer's market since the 1970s. He's thankful for loyal customers. Seeing the faces of the people that come and buy off me and uh, they appreciate our produce. At Brace's Orchard Stand, ninth generation farmer Logan Brace looked back on a good growing season with thanks. Definitely for um, the harvest that we've had this year, you know, and, and uh, I mean, thankful for our customers are following, you know. Harvesting a bounty of thanks. Why are you thankful? Why am I thankful? Um, I'm thankful for just life and family and just every day that God gives me. Now that's some food for thought. In Wilkesbury, Mark Hiller, Eyewitness News. And this marked the 46th year of the farmer's market in downtown Wilkesbury. All right, let's take a look at our photo of the day today. Yeah, this one's sent in from a Mary. It's nice. of a Ford's Pond in Wyoming County. Nice, uh, we'll have to ask Josh what kind of clouds those are, right? We'll have to ask him in a minute. If you have a photo you'd like to share with us, post it to our Eyewitness News Facebook page. We'll be right back.
This is Eyewitness News at 6. A well-known monument on Courthouse Square in downtown Scranton has a little bit of a controversy these days, mainly for some of its factual errors on the monument. Now, one of the errors that's etched in the marble is that of a Bible verse that reads anonymous. Yes. County Commissioner Lorraine Cummings has been fighting to change anonymous to Jesus Christ. The county is spending nearly $60,000 to correct those mistakes more than a decade old. Contractors are now working to fix the errors. And this week, lawmakers voted on a pair of controversial bills dealing with reproductive rights. Governor Wolf already voicing opposition about the legislation. The bills are moving through the Pennsylvania legislature right now. The House passed a bill that requires health care facilities to provide a burial or cremation of fetal remains after an abortion or a miscarriage. The legislation says parents can decide to dispose of the remains outside of a health care facility. Otherwise, it is the facility's responsibility. And it's strictly voluntary. Some of the initial reports came out and said that it wasn't. It was mandating a funeral, which is just pure nonsense. That, that would be cruel. It would be the first time ever that a fertilized egg would legally be characterized that, as a person. That bill now goes to the Senate, which also passed legislation this week. Another bill to ban abortions went to the, when the reasoning is a parental diagnosis of Down syndrome narrowly passed the Senate Wednesday after passing the House in May. Governor Wolf has vetoed that bill. Six children were adopted this afternoon in a ceremony at the Monroe County Courthouse. And after the ceremony, it was time to celebrate as Christian Life Assembly hosted a party with food and games. This year alone, more than 30 children in Monroe County were adopted from foster care. The county still has about 160 children still in the foster care system. Adopting parents say the event is an important way to raise awareness about the need for both foster and adoptive parents. She's our third adoption, um, and each of our adoptions have actually taken place on Adoption Day, which it just makes it kind of special because um, each one has had this special moment in their lives. We were just fostering and didn't really uh, didn't think we were going to adopt, but uh, as time went on, uh, the opportunity came. This is the seventh year the county has celebrated National Adoption Day, which is this Saturday. Chief Meteorologist Josh O'Dell has your eyewitness weather forecast next.